to the front of the second last. A surged on here. Dicey Riley is chasing. These two now moving on from Emily Wade. Marta Lindy has nothing more to offer. Born Famous pursued by Dicey Riley at the last. Born Famous by a length. Dicey Riley on the near side, throwing down a stern challenge. Entering the last furlong. Born Famous. Dicey Riley now a length and a half down. Born Famous still running on willingly in front. Extending the lead close home. And Born Famous beginning to draw clear in the shadows of the post under Conor O'Farrell. Born Famous wins well. Dicey Riley in second. On the run towards the final obstacle, Spike Jones in fourth place. They're away from Scottish Accent and pulled up was De Dancer. Balcottic finding plenty. Now Shore Touch has drawn alongside. They're away from Spike Jones. The last. Balcottic on the right. Shore Touch could do with another decent leap at the last and delivers one. Has a narrow lead, but Balcottic is still in there fighting as Shore Touch's stamina is put to the test. And Balcottic on the inside about a neck or so down as they race up towards the line. Shore Touch still Balcottic sticking that neck up the inside. World set, trained by Mike Samersby. Connor Rabbit in the saddle, carrying one pound overweight. Maroon and white stripes, maroon sleeves, and a quartered cap for 12, sight nor seen. And the last one to post is seven, Magna Moralia. Owned by yeah, well, well in at the weights, this Dicey Riley, Jonathan. I think due to go up three pounds in future. Well, she went up seven pounds for winning at Worcester. I thought that was pretty fair because she hacked up there, largely. And that run at Aintree was probably another step forward, even though it was a defeat. So, yes, I think... Uh, well, she's definitely the one they've got to aim at. Yeah, and Tara Brooch has just got the best turned out award. She's out of Gaspara, who did that double, didn't she? The Sandown and Cheltenham double. <laughs> yes, Gaspara. Yes. Um, it was a big step forward when she finished fourth at Hexham, and she'd been in last place in a field of 16 and stayed on really well to come forward. Off the back of that, they made her favourite at Hexham next time, and she just didn't show the same zip. Mm. So you're, you're hoping that you, that was just a... Yeah, she'll build on the initial effort. I know you love the notebook. Jim Vale's in there. Caught the eye on a oh, big yeah. price a few outings ago. Third in the handicap debut at um, Southall, this fella was. was. Staying on nicely. So up to three miles, I thought might be interesting. Up to three miles that day and does stay. And in form at a, at a low level, Jim Vale. Yeah, it was a, it was a reasonable <laughs> effort, that at Southall. And it wasn't any threat. Speaking about five or six lengths, but at least mm. it was a an indication that a race might come his way. Yeah, and um, Mavillo had these uh, first time cheek beaten when second at Utoxeter. Exactly, as we, we saw as, him sweating yeah. away in the paddock. Yeah. And uh, just call me Al, I noticed it attracted some support, unplaced in his last 10 starts. It has meant the handicap mark's gone zooming down. He does have Brian Hughes, but all his wins have been at two and a half miles or under. And, and those bearing in mind that we're... Yeah, it might be saying two miles seven, but it's actually three miles. Yeah, the the rails are well out today, aren't they? Well, quite far out. Uh, Dicey Riley, 13 to eight favourite. Tara Brooch is nine to two. Jim Vale is steady at sixes. Mavilo is six as well, along with Just Call Me Al. And then 18 and bigger, the rest for this one in the absence of five and six. I'm sure, and, I'm sure there must be a, a rule about backing mares carrying 12 stone, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, as things stand, she does seem to have a, a very solid chance. What, like a stat, you mean? A good yeah, stat for that, of, yeah? You know, some, someone, someone says, oh, never back a mare carrying 12 stone. Right. Unless, of course, it's in a mare's race and they're all carrying 12 stone. Right, OK. Well, I, I, I don't think it'll be an impost to her. We'll Neither do I. Say. OK, but uh, they are ready to. I'll still take a chance with uh, Jim Vale. The starter Good you. is Good on you, Peter. his rostrum. I know it matters to you. Right, the, uh, the starter is on his rostrum. So let's go up to the commentary box. And it's Stephen Powell at one of his own tracks, you could say. One of his local tracks. Hi, Stephen. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, Jonathan, everybody. Flags up for the first, they're walking in. And that's it, they're off. Racing over two miles and seven furlongs here for the ABP handicap hurdle. They go down towards the first of 12 flights with Dicey Riley, Mavelo, Sight North Seed, and also Balcotic, the first four to begin. They will come down towards the first 
with maybe just sight nor seen. On the extreme right in the maroon and white stripes who touch down ahead. And he moves on on the short run to flight two. From Dicey Riley in second position. Nose banded is Balcotic in third. Mavelo racing in fourth position then in company towards the inside with Tara Broach in the white and red. There's one length away back in sixth position to Battle of Actium and three parts away seventh Just Call Me L. Spot the blue cap of uh, Jim Vale, who's racing in eighth place at this point, a length and a half in front of the grey Magna Moralia, and there's half a length to Smart Connection at the rear of the ten runners. As they head out on two complete circuits of the course, and it is with the lead, sights nor seen, carrying at one pound of overweight, trainer Mike Sarsby, who's got two runners in the field, and he's opened up by a couple of lengths as they go towards flight three. To Dicey Riley, Sean Bowen in second position. Balcotic is a length away third, and then there's another length and a half to Tara Broach on the inside of Mavelo as they get over that flight. Another couple of lengths back, Battle of Actium, who in turn is ahead of Just Call Me Al. Jim Vale's getting an early shake of the reins at the back of the field from Robbie Dunn, being driven down towards flight number four. He's on and off the bridle. He's got Magna Moralia towards his outside, and there's two lengths to Smart Connection and Alison Clark at the back of the field. On towards the fifth, final one uh, down the back, and Sight Nor Seen, uh, a wash with sweat, takes them over the flight with a clear advantage to Dicey Riley, looking for her third win in her last five starts after victories at Foss, Lass and Worcester, and ridden by Sean Bowen, who's setting the pace in the Jockeys' Championship this year, already on the 34-winner mark. In third place, Balcotic on the outside, but just uh, being caught out three deep and squeezed along for a stride or two by Joshua Thompson. Mavelo between runners, and Tara Broach is fifth now, but only a neck away back on the running rail under Jamie Hamilton. Another length back to Battle of Actium on his first run for 481 days under Charlie Hammond. Ahead of Just Call Me Al, Brian Hughes, yellow with the uh, blue spots and armlets back on the inside rail. Jim Vale, travelling a little bit better now than he was half a mile ago with Magna Moralia towards the right on his outside and two and a half length smart connection still is the back marker. They've gone through their point of departure. Here's flight number six coming up. Two flights in the home straight. They're pretty close together this afternoon as well. They all negotiated that one in good style and sight nor seen. We'll lead out over the flight that will be the last next time. There was a mistake by Balcotic and his unseated Joshua Thompson there. Just pitched on landing and Joshua went out the side door. The horse continues riderless and Joshua climbs to his feet as the nine now that remain. Head out. On the final circuit, with Sight Nor Seen leading three parts of a length to Dicey Riley in second position, who's always been prominent. Then in third is Mavelo with a loose horse for company. Tara Broach back down in fourth place, a neck in fifth to Battle of Actium. Three parts away, sixth is Just Call Me Al. J then Jim Vale's off the bridle again, being driven along as they go down the side of the course. Magna Morali is on his uh, outside, and the smart connection a length and a half away at the back of the field as he makes his handicap debut over hurdles this afternoon and they go into the wings of flight number eight right opposite the enclosure sight nor seen went out to the right there quite notably and surrendered quite a lot of ground and it means dicey riley has come through and has now gone to the front for the first time tara broach is slipstreaming the leader in third place mavelo is racing in fourth but he's also now being urged for a bit more as they jump the middle one down the back they were followed by battle of actium and then just call me al who's creeping into it a little at the moment. Brian Hughes still hasn't moved on the 10-year-old. Magna Moralia, Jim Vale still on and off the bridle and smart connection in rear as Dicey Riley jumped the final flight down the back which was flattened by Battle of Actium. Sight nor seen is racing wide off the course and losing ground as he does so. So they're heading towards the far turn now. They've got about five furlongs left to run and two flights left to jump. And it is the informed mayor, Dicey Riley, who leads by a length from Tara Broach into second position. Just Call Me Al continues to creep closer. Now he's in third and only two lengths off the leader. Three parts of a length to Battle of Actium in four. Magna Morali has moved into fifth, but he's five lengths away. Eight lengths have opened up to Mavelo. Sight nor seen has dropped away with smart connection as they come now towards 
towards the top of the home straight and the final three furlongs. They've got two left to go. And Dicey Riley is the one to catch. Freewheeling down towards two from home. From Just Call Me Al, who's moving into second on the left. Tara Broach is on the right. They're clear. Over two out of Magnum O'Reilly as Tara Broach just pecked on landing. And Dicey Riley's at the last. Jumps it with a two and a half length lead. Just Call Me Al in second place. Tara Broach in third. These trio are well clear as they're on the flat for home. And Dicey Riley driven clear here by Sean Bowen under 12 stone. And he's going to win for the third time in a last five runs. It is Dicey Riley who wins again under top weight. Beat Tara Broach back in third. Just Call Me Al. And then Magna Moralia in fourth. Yeah, that was a big leap two out, showing there was, plenty, there was plenty left in the tank for Dicey Riley, who has improved today. Consistent type. He finished second behind the well-fancied Bourne Famous at Aintree last time. The front two were clear that day, and Dicey Riley has won this from Tara Brooch in second. And just call me Al in third, who was given a patient ride, delivered by Brian Hughes, had every chance but couldn't claw back Dicey Riley, and has been caught for second. Fourth, by the way, was Magna Moralia. Top weight, mare under a big weight of 12 stone. There's one for the stats, Jonathan. Yeah. Well, she looked like she had a pretty major chance beforehand, and you wouldn't have had too much worry if you'd, if you'd taken the twos or seven to four, because she was always in the first two. When she took it up, she was clearly travelling well, and it was never really in doubt. Uh, Brian Hughes has given uh, just caught me out one of those lovely patient rides. The horse's winds have all been at two and a half miles or shorter. The whole, and he, he hasn't got home. He looked like the second best horse in the race, but he hasn't stayed. Mm. Tara Brooch, Brooch, Brooch has run perfectly right. I thought a uh, battle of Actium, first run for an awfully long time, managed to get involved, leaving the back straight before blowing up. It just, just to sort of showed enough to perhaps give them a bit of hope. Mm. And just call me, I'll drop in trip now, so we know he's now handicapped to be winning races, having come down the way. It's just over a bit shorter. Maybe I think so. Future. I think back to two and a half yeah. miles for him rather than three. Yeah. And Tara Broach, I mean, she's now she's now run two good races in her last three, so a win might be sort of on the cards. I mean, it's only a sixth career start. Mm. That's and, all about. And even if Dicey Riley had those extra three pounds, the manner of his victories, he's close over as well. And her victory as well. Yeah, her victory <laughs> indeed, yeah, as we said, 10 <laughs> uh, stone for a man. She's or even 12 stone. Yeah, I, it, it, all, it was all very straightforward, and that doesn't often happen. Yeah. OK, so that's uh, Sean Bowen and Peter Bowen, who are, of course, synonymous with high-profile successes here at Market Raisin, and they've just won the opener on the card with Dicey Riley. Yeah, she's done well from top weight, hasn't she, here? She carried uh, 12 stone, and um, she's done it nicely in the end, Dicey Riley. And uh, back in second place, uh, Tara Brooch. Uh, let's go to Red Car now. Niall.